The absolute best way to make money in the market for me is to invest in quality companies with strong balance sheets and downtrodden beatdown sectors like the energy sector today. I'm sure you know that the temptation to FOMO into the next hot thing is strong. Many of us, myself included, are often too late to the party with our investments and we end up getting wrecked in the short to midterm as the trend suddenly reverses and we're the ones that got in near the top. Okay, the problem with chasing a trade like that or an investment, depending on how you want to look at it, is that you do place your cash, your investment at significant risk of becoming exit liquidity for those that did get in early and are now taking their profits and selling to you as the stock or precious metal has seen increased demand and a rapidly at times rising value before the market does turn and swing in the other direction. Now, this type of FOMO can and will lose you money. I've said so myself, I'm living proof of this and likely so are you, which is why in due time, I have become a more patient investor and I do prefer to stack precious metals and to take the value approach when investing for gains in my equity portfolios. All right, so this is why I'm here today once more to talk to you about uranium and really the true value opportunity that is currently present in domestically sourced uranium, okay? The overall environment for domestic sourced uranium continues to become increasingly opportunistic as time has gone on, and that is due to the liberal-led Western governments that have been strong proponents of fighting climate change, namely over the last decade in particular, that have shown to also be effective in using their political power and pressure in highly regulated industries such as the you know, oil and gas exploration and and drilling industry to drive those political outcomes, okay? And the outcome that these lawmakers seek is less greenhouse gas emissions. And to do so, they are using their influence right where the spigot starts, okay? By controlling where and when exploration and extraction can take place and how that uh, oil or gas will be transported to the consumer. Now, you also have to add to the fact that a land war involving one of the world's largest producers of oil, gas, and uranium. It has raged on now for almost a year with pretty much no signs of stopping, which has propelled lawmakers to look for options to wean themselves off of Russian energy exports. Okay, so one way to stop buying Russian oil is to turn those old nuclear reactors on if you've got them, or look at ways of building them if you don't. And another way, of course, is to also just stop buying Russian uranium and look at other options. Okay, so Let's look at how Uranium Royalty Core stock ticker symbol UROY on the New York Stock Exchange is one I'm invested in personally. And while this is not financial advice, if you're looking to invest in uranium to diversify your portfolio into base metals and the energy sector, I definitely think you'll want to have a look before the crowd FOMOs in on this one. So let's get to some background information, okay? Now, when the Russian Federation invaded Ukraine in February of 2022, uh, many Western nations, such as those in you know, Western Europe and North America, initially condemned the war and made pretty immediate moves to punish Russia by placing bans on imports of certain goods and services that are you know, produced in Russia in order to place a squeeze on the Russian economy and hopefully destroy the nation's currency. Uh, the problem is many, if not most, Western nations also relied quite a bit, if not entirely, on Russian exported gas and oil. And let's not forget uranium to keep the lights on in their country, okay? So a lot of this mess is self-inflicted and now obviously political folly given the current situation. Uh, but regardless of who and, and how we got here, something still had to be done. Now, what the media shockingly failed to tell you, right? They failed to tell you something is that certain Russian exports are not on that list. And those uh, exports are namely products that cannot be sourced elsewhere at this time and are deemed to be essential. Uranium is one such commodity. Okay, so you may not have known, but nearly one in five households in the United States is powered by uranium. But more shockingly to me is that 90% of the fuel used to power those nuclear reactors was purchased from Russia or allies of Russia, such as Kazakhstan, okay? So with domestic production accounting for only 5% of all nuclear fuel spent each year in the United States, that's right around the average, there is a lot of renewed emphasis on that domestically sourced uranium. 
it's really starting to take off. And the U.S. Strategic Uranium Reserve is another topic that may lead to increased um, you know, uranium purchases, that is, from companies operating here in the United States and Canada. All right, so now this is where Uranium Royalty Corps comes in. Okay, this company accumulates and manages a portfolio of geographically diversified uranium interests that uh, you know may be acquired directly from um, individual mine operators or from third-party holders of existing royalties across the spectrum of project stages. Now, we're talking from uh, the beginnings, the grassroots efforts, all the way to full-fledged production. Now, in evaluating such transactions, the company does utilize a disciplined approach to manage its fiscal profile, which has demonstrated to be very successful. All right, so the company is still very young, and the share price currently attractive, in my viewpoint, based on where it's been historically. Uroy was born in 2020, so just a couple years ago, and today does maintain a portfolio of 15 royalties, with two of them resuming production and generating revenue for Uroy, as well as its shareholders. Okay, so what's a royalty, Florida Stacker, right? If you don't know, well, look at base and precious metals royalty and streaming companies as the financiers of the mining world. Okay, these are the banks for miners. These are businesses that lend capital to the miners so that the miners can focus on, well, mining, which typically has a very large upfront and also, uh, you know, existing operating costs that are heavily tied to the price of fuel, which unfortunately, as you know, isn't exactly cheap these days. Okay, so mining also has a long roadmap in terms of uh, the time it does take from a discovery to actual production and a shipment to the market. So a lot of drilling, samples, permitting, and lastly, financing has to take place before the operation can start producing revenue. Okay, this requires a pretty special financing terms due to the increased timeline and risk. Now, royalties provide funding for all of this, but they also take a percentage cut for themselves of the actual base or precious metal that is mined on top of cash repayments, okay? So if you were to borrow on, say, a house, normally you just pay cash back to the bank that you, you borrowed that money from. In this particular case, you'd be paying back cash and you know, sending them a couple two by fours <laughs> of, your, of your home every month as well in payment, all right? So they're going to be uh, not only paying them back, but also providing um, you know, some of the revenue or the actual metals itself to the royalty company. All right, so royalty companies can just, you know, liquidate that metal at spot price and, uh, you know, call it additional revenue, or they can actually hold uh, the uranium, gold, silver, copper, zinc, you name it, and sell it or borrow against it in the future uh, at a more favorable price or time. Okay, so these are options for these companies. Now, royalty companies are typically managed by experienced former executives of mining companies. Okay, so these Managers know the industry, and uh, they also know the industry players as well. So Uranium Royalty Corps, for instance, does look not only for new discoveries to invest in, uh, but they also look at today's market and uh, you know what's existing on the market as far as non-operational mines uh, that they may be able to make a bid on and purchase or lend toward as the trend for uranium does look very bright, especially domestically sourced here going forward on the tail end of a decades long bear market. Okay, so spot price for uranium is coming alive, but it's still relatively low and legislation is currently uh, underway and becoming much more favorable for domestic exploration and production of uranium ore for America's nuclear reactors. Okay, so there you go. Uh, you've got uh, political support as well as a uh, geopolitical environment that does favor nuclear energy and uh, Uranium fuels all of that. So here's the five-year chart for Uroy, which does only go back to the IPO back in 2020, just after the election of Joe Biden. You can see that the price did begin to rise as domestic uranium production began to gain uh, some momentum, all right? As the administration looked to lean itself off of fossil fuels, they took some pretty immediate action against the oil and gas industry, and those were all uh, bullish indicators for uranium. So as oil and gas prices continue to rise you know, after the election of Joe Biden into 2021 and 2022, uh, the case just continued to grow stronger, driving up the price of the stock. Now, the stock did reach an all-time high of $5.60 just before the Russian invasion of Ukraine, before profit-taking, that is, has taken place. 
And the price stabilized around two to two and a half dollars over the last seven months on average. Now, looking at the one month chart, things are starting to once more heat up for Uroy as the stock uh, has gained nearly 16% over the last month and looks to be headed back towards uh, $3 per share as it has already done this four times over the last seven months, bouncing between two and $3 per share. So we've got a pretty bullish case here for royalty companies and Uroy in particular, as in my opinion, they are a terrific way to invest in precious and base metals, uh, the mining companies that is, but with a lot less risk as the royalty companies are well capitalized and uh, they don't have to worry about the additional overhead expense of drilling, developing, extracting, permitting, and uh, so forth that in uh, you know so many cases slow down mining operations. That's pretty valuable to me. And they also usually run with a very, uh, you know, pretty small team, right? You can you can run a royalty company out of a small, small office building with a pretty small staff. So you don't have a large payroll, not a whole lot of overhead, no costly equipment. All right. So let's go ahead and recap the case here for Uranium Royalty Corps. And, and the case for me is that domestically sourced uranium is uh, increasing in popularity and demand. And it's just not there. OK, the capabilities are there, but it's going to take time. Uh, to get everything uh, up and going. And Uroy is, is is really at the tip of the spear with this as demand for uranium is, is growing, uh, not just here, but abroad. Uh, Germany and Japan are countries that come to mind that are once more looking uh, to the nuclear option, right, for uh, keeping the lights on. And it's it's really something to, um, to look at and to focus on now before the price starts to run and everybody else has already come in and then and then you're FOMOing in, right? So I've placed some links in the video description section that will take you directly to the website. Um, you'll learn a little bit about Uranium and Uranium Royalty Core there. Uh, it also includes some additional project information and investor information. So with price targets, uh, you know, as high as $5.75 for the stock, looking at the price today, I think uh, there's a pretty good opportunity here for a 50% to a 2x gain in the upcoming bull market, that plus more. So if you're interested, then do please consider it and have a look in the video description section for those links I provided. Uh, once more, I'd like to thank you all for viewing today's video, especially those of you that are still here right now and didn't click off right away. It really does mean a lot to me as a content creator and uh, your view, like, and share is really how I do keep the channel's <laughs> lights on, so to speak. So. I'd like to wish you a great day or a great night, wherever you may be, stackers, and uh, come back soon because I do have a midweek review of the 2020 through, 2023, almost said two again, Australian silver kookaburra. I've got that coin. I want to show it to you. So come on over and I'll see you there. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel.